So we're in the, the very high reaches of the Glenelg River here. And now that we've got these flows coming down the river and the, the connectivity of the river is so much improved, backed up with natural rain and environmental flows, we're seeing these fish moving up river to places that they've just not been in well since Rocklands was put in. It's really important that people understand what we're doing in the river to help restore its condition. And by having uh, people that spend a lot of time on the river, like anglers, out involved in the fish surveys and seeing the results firsthand, they get a better sense for, for how we're managing the river, but also we get to learn from them and, and share in their experience. <laughs> Just love that. Yes, yeah, so the last few days we've been continuing uh, some environmental flows monitoring. So we've actually been setting nets. We've got nine nets set across the lower catchment uh, around Dartmoor. So we've got six nets on the Glenelg and three nets up in a tributary of the Glenelg. And we're trying to monitor the effects or the fish response to the environmental flow. So we've done surveys beforehand, before a flow, and then we've done them on and after the flow to try and see which fish are moving around with the assistance of the environmental flow. One of the, the things that they need for the, for the program is statistically strong data. So if you've got to catch enough fish to be able to draw conclusions about the effectiveness of flows. And the Glenalg is really fortunate to have a, a pretty strong fish population. We're using what's called double wing fike nets or eel nets are commonly called. All of our nets are facing downstream with the wings spread to the left and right bank to try and intercept as many fish that are moving upstream as we can. Yep. The Glenelg is home to several species of what's called diadromous fish. They spend most of their time in the river and they return to the estuary or out to sea to spawn. So we've got tupong, we've got estuary perch, we've got black brim and um, short fin eel are the key species of migratory fish or diadromous fish that we have in the Glenelg. And all of these species need to migrate from the, the upper reaches of the Glenelg down to either the estuary or out to the ocean to spawn or reproduce and then the juveniles need to come back up into the river and spread out up into the fresher reaches. So that's where the environment flows and connectivity and maintaining connectivity in the river allows those species to actually complete their life cycle and re-establish populations further upstream. So even though the Glenelg's really beautiful uh, compared to a lot of our rivers, it is impacted and it is modified. Uh, in the 1950s, Rocklands Reservoir, which is one of the biggest reservoirs in the state, was built further up the river. And that's taken a lot of the flow that would naturally come down the river and, and diverted it away for, um, for farming use. By building the reservoir, it's shortened the period where the river would flow from, from rainfall events. What that means is there's a shorter period of time when the river is, is running well, and fish need the river to be running to be able to get through the shallow sections put more water in the river, it gets deeper over those shallow sections and fish can move through those areas more freely. If you take that water away, you end up with these isolated pools which um, the fish sort of shelter in, but they can't move along the river and access different habitat, access more food. Some fish need to move up and down the river as part of their, their spawning cycle. Reducing connectivity by reducing flow is a big problem. So we actively manage releases from Rocklands Reservoir so water gets let out of a, a big valve, a big tap at Rocklands Reservoir to create that connectivity and, and support the life cycle of fish in the river. For a lot of fish, uh, they've developed to respond to uh, rainfall events. So you get a big thunderstorm in summer, you get a bit of a flow in the river and the fish know innately that it's time to move because there's gonna be that adequate depth over the shallow sections of the river. And that's important for them, for one, to be able to physically move over those shallow sections, but it also reduces the risk of predation by birds. Doing these sorts of surveys helps us get a better understanding of when the fish are moving, on what size flows, what types of flows. So we're seeing some, some great responses from the, the fish community and the river's benefiting from uh, environmental flows. 
Some of the benefits that we've seen in terms of the return of migratory fish, we didn't anticipate when we first started delivering environmental water. We were really just looking at some of the um, resident species like river blackfish that tend to stay in one spot. We wouldn't have anticipated that there was going to be these big migrations of, of the migratory species coming up the river. Uh, and so by having the monitoring in place, it helped us figure that out. And now we managed to support those species. So at any given year, if we have the capacity or the water available, we might be able to assist them to complete that migration or get more, more fish spread out upstream.